We're in Hong Kong. Let's go. Welcome to one of Asia's most dynamic destinations. City of Dreams. Hong Kong is a perfect blend of century-old traditions, modern and stunning city skyscrapers. Can't believe what the city looks like. Bustling street markets and a melting pot of diverse cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what makes Hong Kong so special? Today, we're going to be discovering some hidden gems, absolutely spectacular. And the foodies that we are, we are going to be tasting our way through Hong Kong and we're going to be taking you along with us. Welcome to Hong Kong. Good morning from arguably the most stunning harbour I have ever been to. I cannot believe that we get to be here. So, we have spent the last few weeks travelling through Taiwan from north to south, eating lots of food, riding bikes, taking trains, even going on ferries. And then we took a short flight from Taipei and have arrived in Hong Kong. And I cannot tell you how excited we are to be here. There are probably a bunch more reasons, but here are the main three. Number one is a little over 15 years ago, my dad visited Hong Kong for the first time and it's a city that he loves so much. So I just met my first hmm? friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? What's your name? My name is Xu Hui Han. Oh, nice oh. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you live in Hong Kong? No, no, no. From Harbin. Oh, where's that? China, Harbin. Oh, you're from China? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. nice to meet you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Number two is Hong Kong is filled with so many traditions, probably dating back to centuries and centuries ago. So I'm really excited to see how traditional Hong Kong really is. And number three is before coming here, a lot of you guys told us that Hong Kong is super expensive. We're going to be telling you all of our costs on this very short trip. And I'm so sad that it is indeed a very short trip. We're going to spend about four days in Hong Kong which is sad. As I'm standing by the harbour, it is just towering with skyscrapers. This is a city like no other, and we've been going to so many different cities this year, like Bangkok. Uh, where have we been? And we've been to so many cities this year, like Bangkok, like Kuala Lumpur, like Taipei, where we've just been. But this... It is absolutely breathtaking. Another friend. <laughs> where are you from? Uh, you're Be from Beijing. You're from Beijing? Beijing, yeah. Beijing, wow, Beijing. nice to meet you. <laughs> Grab front. Thank you, nice thank to you. meet you both. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. See you See you Bye-bye. <laughs> Hong Kong is a jam-packed city of over 8,000 skyscrapers with 7.5 million people packed into this place, making it one of the most condensed cities on the planet. And just by looking at it, it kind of gives me a feeling like I'm in Monaco or something. So maybe this is the Monaco of Asia. You'll have to let me know what you think about that. Hong Kong means fragrant harbor, which is so fitting. And we've started here in Victoria Harbor on Hong Kong Island. We're in Hong Hong Kong, We're my girl. Here. I can't believe it. I never pictured myself in a city like this. It's absolutely fascinating. It's so like, you know, like it's, I don't know, I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> when we first arrived at this harbor last night, I had goosebumps <laughs> everywhere. So let's go explore day one of Hong Kong. First thing you notice as soon as you walk down any street is these skyscrapers that are towering over the road. That's how it feels. So even though we're walking on a pedestrian walk, it feels like the tower is like gonna fall on top of us, which is kind of crazy. I don't think I've ever been to a city that is so compact. The tram is coming! As we've got onto the main street, we're seeing all forms of transportation, like these double-decker trams. I've never seen this in any other city, and you've got an old-style tram, but they branded with new modern brands. Look how cool it is! It's even open air! So you can like watch, you can see what's going on while you're cruising through the city. We got these really old style taxis. They look like they're from the 1900s. And then you've got modern Teslas, you've got electric cars, you've got buses and all sorts of transportation. Plus so many people walking around on the streets. There is such an atmosphere in the city. Despite 
despite them looking cool, we're going to actually need to figure out how to get on one of those to head to our next place, which is Causeway Bay. I'm not sure if you can actually take the tram there, so we're going to have to figure that out. It's day one. Well, this is madness. There are a lot of people in Hong Kong. I don't think I've ever been on a crosswalk with so many people before. And it's midday. What's happening? We've been traveling full time for the past four years. And from the outside, it might look like this. But on the inside, it really looks like this. So we decided to switch the plastic bottles to Kitsch shampoo and conditioner bars. We wanted to thank Kitsch for sponsoring this video as they cater so well to travelers like us. Living from hotel room to hotel room and using no name brand shampoos make my hair look really dry and really gross. But since I switched to Kitsch, my hair is stronger, shiny and silky smooth. They are super convenient to travel with and they're so much better for the environment since they're completely vegan, cruelty free with no sulfates, parabens or phthalates. When we settle into a place, we use our shower caddy and they dry super quickly or when we're on the go, we use our hang dry bags. The shampoo is also high quality and gives an excellent leather. One bar is equal to a hundred washes. That's two bottles worth. My favorite is the shea butter bar. It's high in amino acids and vitamins. It smells divine removing all the frizz and giving more shine and softness. You can still feel beautiful even on travel days. Plus, if you use our code SHEVENDEV, you can get 25% off your first order. Kitsch also ships to the US and 27 other countries like the UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and more. And get the subscription for an even better discount. Click the link in the description below. Okay, back to the video. So I've just seen that they stop in the middle because I was like, they only use the middle rails. But there's a little stopping point there. So I think we should go and catch it over there. Let's do it, my girl. Let's do Look it. Look how crazy the city looks I behind know. you. It looks like the buildings are bending over the road. It really does. That it gives really you an idea. Does. We aren't sure how to do this, but we're going to figure it out. So we've come to the center of the road and here are the train tram tracks. Here it is. I think we get on this one. I think so. I think it so. It looks good. so cool. There's a conductor. Hello. We can go on any one we like. This one's full. Oh. oh, it says, look, fair, adult, three, child, one, senior citizen, one. So three, three dollars. There's so many. Which one to choose? It's just standard. Here comes one. So here are the tram tracks <laughs> and so here's cool. our tram. This is it. Is this us? Goes. <laughs> is this one oh, ours? Yeah, I guess we go. Okay. I guess we get on. So you get on the back of the track. Whoa. This is so cool. You can see the next one. So let me give you a five second tram tour. We're on the upper deck. There's one seat on this side, two seats on this side, and it's completely open air. So we can stick our hand or our head out the window. And there's open windows the entire way around. So we can see out the back and we can see out the front. Wow, this is awesome. We're in Hong Kong. Let's go. I honestly think I would do this all day long, just go back and forth, up and down these lines. And you can see how many people there are everywhere. So the tram costs three Hong Kong dollars per person and it goes all the way along on these train tracks. And it's so cool because you can see all the trams are lining up. I can even see them lining up all the way there in the front. This really shows you what I was talking about. You've got these giant buildings behind us and then you've got these old style trams in the middle of the streets. They all have different advertisements on and it's so much fun. I can't believe how affordable it is. So we're slowly ticking off and seeing what is affordable and what is expensive here in Hong Kong. This gives you an idea of how many trams there are, all lined up, so we're stopped kind of in a tram traffic jam. We're in a tram jam. A tram jam. A tram jam. These trams are actually called ding-dings because of the sound that they make. So they make a sound like ding-ding, 
and then you know the tram's coming. <laughs> I've never taken a transport like this before. No, this is the first time. And it's right between the buildings. And you can just stick your head out, you get the fresh air. Also, these are totally electrical, so really carbon, carbon... Conscious. Carbon conscious, very green. The next stop is Patterson Street. I can't believe what this city looks like. It's unbelievable. Just like that, tram trip is over. We're gonna have to do that again. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That was <laughs> so seamless, <laughs> so, so easy, so fun. One wow. of the best experiences I've ever had, in fact. It's such a really good first impression of Hong Kong. Things to know about the tram: get on on the back. You pay when you leave and you just have lots of fun. That, <laughs> yeah, that's it. You that's just it. enjoy the ride. <laughs> okay, I think we are officially entering the modern, more designer shopping streets. So this Causeway Bay is known as sort of the retail heart of Hong Kong. There's Chanel, there's Hermes, there's all the popular brands. I even see Jollibee. There's even a Jollibee. <laughs> to all my Filipinos, there is a Jollibee in Hong Kong. And this is definitely a more business-centered, lots of people in formal attire, business wear, and it's very, very busy. Crazy. Now this is next level. This is probably one of the most insane shopping strips we have ever been on. There's Alexander McQueen and Balenciaga behind me. We definitely don't fit in here. I think we fit more into the orange, green and red, if you know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? Oh no, 7-Eleven. <laughs> That's where we belong. That's our place. One dollar meal. <laughs> I don't even want to know what these things cost. All I know is I can afford 7 Eleven. So we found one of these high end brands. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Gucky? Goosey? So we're going to go and go inside Goosey. And we're going to try and. <laughs> How are you doing that with a straight face? I'm so curious to know what something costs in the Gucci store here in Hong Kong. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to find one thing and I'm going to tell you the price of it and then I'm going to walk out. <laughs> okay, so we've been walking in and out. Nothing has a price on. That's when you know you don't want to know the price. The architecture of these buildings is something like I've never seen before. They are perfectly symmetrical. And normally when you go to other cities, each building has a different shape. We're here, every single one is exactly the same. Hundreds of perfectly long square shaped commune buildings and apartment buildings. Her. I see the harbors over there, so maybe we can go and check it out. I don't know what it is about water and buildings being together, but it's really, really nice to just see and relax. And they have coffee here. You want to get a coffee? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. What we actually like to do in every country is talk about a coffee currency. So we compare the price of the coffee in every country and then we can kind of decide if that's an expensive country or not. The cappuccino here is 36 Hong Kong dollars. Is that expensive? <laughs> can you do a conversion? <laughs> Quick maths. Yeah, I think we can do it. Okay. So how much is it? <laughs> In dollars. I only know in Thai baht. Okay, what is that in <laughs> Thai baht? Our brains work in Thai baht because we used to live in Thailand for two years. 180? 180 baht. Okay, so we've worked out it's four American US dollars, four and a half, right? That is an expensive coffee. We're used to maybe one or two, maximum three dollars for a coffee. Let me introduce you to something called Girl Map. If we take a cheap mode of transportation that cost us three, because we would have been saving on all of that transportation. We have enough money for coffee. Makes sense to me. Also, if your boyfriend pays, it's free. Girl man. <laughs> Is that true, my girl? Yes. Okay. Hello. You want to eat on, what's my boss? Um, eight, please. Thank you. 
So not only is it a coffee shop, but also a really beautiful boutique. So far, three dollars on a tram and <laughs> thirty-six on a coffee. The rest of the dollars on a coffee. We have no more. That's it. We got the coffee shop and boutique, but it's right on the street. And this is the only chair. We get to look at the cool atmosphere and drink a very expensive coffee. Worked hard for my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> coffee is strong here. It's really good. I think it's safe to say that it was worth putting money in the coffee pot. It's nice to like taste the coffee in each country that we go to. Hong Kong, good coffee. I just realized that the coffee cup says beautiful ladies on. I guess that makes sense since we're at a shop called Her, but this is what I've been drinking. Pretty good though. It's my kind of shop. Sorry, sorry. Just to like be in this world and fully immerse ourselves in Hong Kong has been so great. We haven't really been doing much. And to add on to that, there's so many different levels to Hong Kong. So let me show you what I mean. So we have the ground floor, beneath us is the metro, then we have shops here, there's restaurants there, then apartment buildings. So not only do you look where you're going, but you need to be looking above you, below you. There's so much to see all in one place. Like you just gotta keep looking. It's like sensory overload. When you hear that sound, you know it's time to cross. It's the sound of Hong Kong. Yeah, that is the sound of Hong Kong. <laughs> We're crossing. We're crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch where you're going. Watch where you're going. Which way are we going? This way? East. We're go are we going east? It's actually madness what's going on here. We got buses, we got trams, people everywhere. Below us is the metro right now. Where are we, girl? I was just thinking about when my dad was here probably close to 20 years ago and I remember seeing pictures of the same taxis but yet I'm in the most modern metropolis ever. It's like a city that's trapped in the 1920s and also 2050. A total contrast but it kind of works in one city. That's kind of amazing actually. So we've been playing this game which is like count the Teslas just because we've seen so many here, so many electric cars in total and oh, there's another one, as I say it. And we just saw some lady get out the back of it with her pet. This is crazy. Obviously you can get Uber Black, which is more of a luxury car, but you can also get Uber Pet. If you wanna go in a luxury car with your pet in the back, you can. We're hungry right now and it's lunchtime. We wanna go and get some food. So instead of taking the tram, maybe we can get an Uber Black or a luxury car to take us to lunch. Did you hear him correctly? He wants to get an Uber Tesla to go and have lunch, which is a 10 minute walk away. I think that's what Hong Kong does to you. It just makes you want to like do luxury things. This is not in our budget, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. An Uber Black is a hundred Hong Kong dollars for like a four minute ride. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> that is insane. That is crazy. Okay. Can I just say that we've been walking the entire day because we did not want to take a taxi. And now Dev's like, we should just take an Uber Tesla. What? There's something wrong with us. Hong Kong does something to you. <laughs> you see all the cars and you're like, I want to go in one of them. We've never been in a Tesla and Elon Musk is from South Africa where we're from. So you can choose what level of conversation you want the driver to talk to you. And you can choose what temperature you want your ride to be. I'm going to book one. Okay. I'm going to book it. You're crazy. <laughs> He's really doing it. I'm nervous. Confirm pickup. Where are we? Um, here? <laughs> I'm here. Okay, we got one. It's one minute away. Tesla Model Y. <laughs> okay, I feel a little bit silly for doing this, but what an experience. We've never ever been in a Tesla before. And now we just get to take one as an Uber for a whole five minutes. And it costs a lot, <laughs> but I think it's worth it. It's happening. I don't know how to open the door. <laughs> how, do you, how do you open the door? Hello. Wow, this is crazy. 
can't believe what we're doing right now. But I think it's worth the experience. It's really clean and there's like a big screen. You can see what cars are next to you. You can see a car behind you. It smells great. We've never been in an electric car before. It's really cool. Thank you. Is it okay if I take a picture? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, uh, that was an experience. Wow, that was crazy. This was our ride. Yeah, this was our ride. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Bye bye. Am I dreaming? Did we just do that? My mouth hurts because I was grinning the whole time. Like, 10 out of 10 experience. It lasted five minutes, but it was so enjoyable. We could have walked here, but worth but it. I'm sorry, it was worth it. Oh, this looks nice. Oh, wow. What is this? Whoa, Mac look. key yummy food. One, two, three. Whoa. It has seven Michelin stars. Okay, it's obviously a no-brainer. We have to eat here, right? Um, well, everything is in Chinese, but it looks like they have soups, they have dumplings. Well, if everything's in Chinese and it's local That's and it's a good got Michelin sign. guide, it's I a no-brainer. We have to eat here. We really have stumbled upon this. We just asked the Uber driver to take us to our area and he literally dropped us there and we just decided to walk through some construction. And this is where we came to, Maki Yummy Food. Okay, let's do this. I don't know what we're going to be in for. I'm sure it'll be delicious. We've just stumbled upon the most hole-in-the-wall, inconspicuous restaurant that's casually got seven Michelin stars. It's such a tiny little restaurant. Very simple. They've got a counter here, wooden table and chairs. And they're making dim sum and pot stickers right behind me. We get to see the whole process. Okay, so let's have a look at the menu. Um, okay, thank you. The entire menu. Oh, wait. It's got English. Hey. Okay, so now we know what to order. So they've got pot stickers, they've got shalong bao, they've got steamed dumplings, wontons, they've got spicy sour noodle soup. We decided to get the pot stickers, dumplings with chili oil, and the spicy and sour noodles. Whoa, what is this? Oh my goodness, what did you order? What is this? We have just received a Michelin star worthy, seven times worthy lunch. We've got the pot stickers over here, which are like normal dumplings with pork inside. And then you can see they're really pan fried at the bottom. And then we have our monster noodle soup. I think it's got pork blood in here. It's got mushrooms. It's got tofu. And then over here, we've got the mala chili oil dumplings. It's got chives. It's got that lovely dark mala paste. We can actually see them making the dumplings in the back. It's putting the pork filling inside. And this is what comes out. First things first, I have to go in on the hot and sour soup. It's kind of sticky and tangy. And I can already tell it's gonna be sour. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's super flavorful. Whoa. The noodles are kind of like rice noodles. And then the tangy sauce has like a really salty, sweet, sour flavor. <laughs> it's really, really yummy. Next up, we're gonna have the chili oil and the mala noodles. And I'm gonna get a little bit of minced pork, a little bit of chives, and one massive dumpling. This is going to be a big bite. That is an explosion of flavor. Mm. For some reason, my mouth is tingling. And I don't know why, but I've got this weird sensation. It's like my lips and tongue are numb. I don't know what that is. We're gonna have to Google it. The filling is super soft and flavorful and not spicy. Just like kickstarts, this explosion in your mouth, like a bomb. Now I'm just gonna add a little, little bit of soy over here. I'm gonna dip my little pan fried pot sticker in my soy. Perfectly flavorful pork in the middle and the pan fried crispy outer layer is heavenly. Dim sum actually originated in the south of China, which is where we are right now. And dim sum actually translates to touch of heart. One of my favorite foods ever. I can totally understand why this place has seven Michelin stickers outside its window because the pop stickers alone deserve those seven Michelin stickers. <laughs> we paid 84 Hong Kong dollars for all three meals. Not too bad for Michelin food, $10 Michelin food. We'll put the link to this restaurant in the description below. That was an unbelievable meal. There is a spot here that's missing, so I think it needs a 2023 sticker. Michelin, where you at? Because that was 
hands down one of the best meals I've ever had. So now I think we're going to take a train ride to a different part of Hong Kong, which is called Mong Kok. And we're going to see the street night markets. We're going to see what the vibe is like in a different area. So we're going to take the metro for two lines to get to Mong Kok. And we have to leave Hong Kong Island and go to the mainland, which is amazing that there is a metro from an island to the mainland. Mind blowing. We've just arrived in Mong Kok. This is a different district and we've just seen this double story Adidas building. And we were talking about price earlier. We just saw a pair of shoes for 1,400 Hong Kong dollars. So we didn't buy them. <laughs> just the feeling I'm getting with all the cars, giant screens behind me. It kind of has a New York feeling. I've never been to New York, but this is what I would imagine it to be like. Giant high rise buildings and big screens. You always see the big screens in New York. So is this what New York is like? When was the last time you saw a telephone booth? That is so crazy. Here's all the giant billboards. It looks like New York, there's some street food with some duck and then boom, telephone. Wow, <laughs> it's busy. It's busy. <laughs> Everywhere. Oh, busy. Busy. This is the busiest city you've ever been. Yeah, by far. So we've somehow stumbled into a night market. I'm not sure what's down here, but lots of people are going down. And what's really special is I told my grandmother today that we're in Hong Kong and she sent me a picture that she was here in 1984. 39 years ago, she came to Hong Kong and now we are here, we're gonna experience it. This street just like goes on and on and on. Lots of bags on this side. We got some jewelry, toys. Every single street in Hong Kong is busy. Very good. <laughs> what have we stumbled upon here? Our favorite pastime. <laughs> we were just in Taiwan and the claw machine craze is crazy. Yeah. So we got hooked. But this is like a really cool one. Yeah, this is like, look at these guys. So tempting. This street is called Sneakers Street because it has all of your normal brands, Adidas, New Balance, Nike. There's only sneakers. Look at all the brands. Puma, Adidas, Nike, Converse, New Balance. So after roaming the streets for a little while, we ventured all through Sneaker Town and most of those stores were so tempting. We had to like pry ourselves out of the store to not buy anything. But the other thing that Hong Kong is famous for, egg tarts. So we're going to try and look for some to see if we can end our day on a very sweet note. Eee, found them! Ooh, they look golden and toasty and yummy. Can I have one egg tart? Egg tart? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Look how beautiful this note is. Shishi, thank you. Thank you. Egg tart secure. It cost us eight Hong Kong dollars. Look how glorious this looks. And it smells even better. Eight dollars of heaven. Oh, I wish you could smell this. So you may already recognize this egg tart because we all maybe know it as pastage donata, which is a Portuguese egg tart. And if you didn't know this, Macau, which is right next door, was colonized by the Portuguese. So that's why this is super, super famous here as well in Hong Kong. In Macau, they caramelize the top and here they don't. I'm gonna have to bite it. It's literally so fresh. It's about to like disintegrate in my hand. Holy cow. Oh. <laughs> Lamborghinis and egg tarts. It is so crispy. The bottom pastry is super flaky. The inside tastes like heaven. We have had the most unbelievable first day here in Hong Kong. Bye with the egg tart. What's the happiest place on earth? Disneyland. If you're a crazy Disney fan just like me, get ready for us to show you the inside of the enchanting Hong Kong Disneyland. Let's do it! Today we're taking you on a magical adventure where dreams come to life and fairy tales unfold. It has been a childhood dream of mine to visit Disneyland. This is my first one and I'm going to take you guys on a whirlwind of an enchanting day. Let's go to Hong Kong Disneyland. 
We took the train from Hong Kong Island and then we got on the Disney Express where the entire train was Disney themed. The windows had little Mickey ears and there was memorabilia inside the train. And now we have just got through the gate and this is the first thing that we see. Beautiful little mini castle. We got a train going by. We got Mickey and right now it's October. So the Halloween theme. So I'm sure we're going to see different pumpkins and Halloween scary things throughout. But we're going to go straight through the entrance right now and show you our first impression and go on as many rides, take as many pictures with Disney characters. I know this day is all about Shiv, but I think I'm way too excited as well. It's my first time going to Disneyland, but Dev went to the Disneyland in Orlando when he was a kid. How does it feel to be your second time, my first time? Even though I'm not a kid, I still feel like a kid. Oh my gosh, wow. look at this. Look at where we are. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always dreamed of coming to Disneyland. And at the very young age of 27, I finally made it. What's he doing? This is unbelievable. I can't actually believe that I'm here. It's like I've come home. Look at all these houses. They call it Disneyland and I can see it because we've just walked into it feels like a different universe. We're in a new town, new land. All the buildings are different. There's always music playing. It feels like we're in a Disney movie already. We've been walking around for a whole five minutes and everybody is dressed to the max. They've got ears and it's super cool because they're playing Halloween music and everything is Halloween themed. There's pumpkins everywhere. They're playing kind of eerie, creepy music. It's really a spectacle. I'm a bit like overwhelmed. It honestly feels like I'm in a movie. I'm in this like Disney village and people are going crazy. I'm glad I'm not the only Disney fan. <laughs> First store that we've walked into is like a merchandise store and people are going crazy. They're buying like Alice bands and toys, teddies. I love that. People are really in the Disney theme. Look at the store. Holy moly. Just to show you one of the shops, an amount of memorabilia. This is only one of them, for example. So we got teddies, we got more teddies. People are going crazy. Look at the amount of people. You got small sizes, you got key rings, teddies over there, more teddies. Girls losing their mind. Okay, am I crazy? Look how cute these look. I need to be in theme. Yes, you have to. You look like a little Disney princess. Do I look like Minnie Mouse? You do. You look adorable. Should I get them or is that... I think you should get them. You only go to Disneyland Hong Kong once. Right? Exactly. I am officially in character. I got my little mousy lobes and I am so ready for the rest of the day. We went into these merch shops and it just felt so wrong to walk around without having ears on. Now I feel like I fit in. So we're going to give you a little bit of the lay of the land and then we pretty much have no idea. We have everything on the app which we'll show you a little screen recording over here because this place is so big we're going to need a lot of time to figure out what's actually going on so on this strip we've got cinema looking buildings we've got bakeries Starbucks Disney Starbucks this is like my world I've officially entered Cheval world that's how I feel if you ever want to know what the meals are looking like about a hundred dollars and up and we've got cakes and cookies and this is pretty much the merchandise lane enjoy the rest of your day So a lot of you guys don't actually know my backstory, but before I chose this crazy travel lifestyle, traveling the world, this used to be my home. I used to live in this magical castle and I used to sing with the birds and stroll through the fields and wear lots of cute dresses. But of course, choosing the travel lifestyle, I had to give all of this up. So it's really nice to be back home again. <laughs> I used to live in this castle. Oh, really? <laughs> We're about to go on our first ride and it's this like orbit planet spaceship thing. It looks so cool and I think we're up next. This is us go! Here we go! Clip in, go, clip in. <laughs> we're strapped in. Let's do this. better not be a scary ride. I think we better hold. Whoa! Is ours gonna like elevate? <laughs> 
like lift up and do something weird. But this is really weird. I'm having the best time. <laughs> I was just going up. I was just doing the up thing. Okay, first ride done. Wow. I used to stay right there. Okay, so we're now waiting in line for the Space Mountain ride, and you can guess who wanted to go on Space Mountain. A high speed roller coaster type ride in the dark with sharp turns, sudden drops, and stops. They said it was a bit of a thrilling ride, and I'm not like the biggest fan of roller coasters, so I feel like my hand is already shaking. That is so We're bad. already in the line, so there's no turning back now. No. There's nowhere to go. I'm, an, I'm afraid. Okay, we're on the hyperspace mountain ride. Oh. Yeah, I really do. Oh my gosh, Whoa. that was insane. But that was the coolest ride ever. There's no way we could have recorded that. Whoa, how cool was that? That was insane. Wow. So worth it. That ride was scary but thrilling, but we've been on the world's most dangerous flight to look like. <laughs> and if we can go on that, we can go on anything. This was easy compared oh, to that. Nothing compared to look like. <laughs> Disneyland supposed to be for me or for you? He is obsessed with all these little things. I can go on, I put the criteria. You can ride. I can ride. <laughs> <laughs> he fangirled. <laughs> He's having the best time. I love Disneyland. I thought Disney was for me. We're doing all, all the boy rides. This is what you came for. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now to pay close attention to the following safety information. Here we go. This is crazy. We're like right in front. Stand by, the launch door has malfunctioned. Oh, easy. Oh, I think not. Just to be clear, this is not part of the tour. completely different world and what we're doing is just exploring going to the different places and admiring the beauty the art the architecture of it all this is like a whole new magic castle the attention to detail is unreal this is it's a small world so we're gonna go on the ride right now So It's a Small World is one of the most famous rides in all of the Disneylands around the world. And it's a boat ride that's very iconic. So this is special besides being really cool. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's actually kind of crazy how many strollers there are here at Disneyland. I think there are more strollers than rides, and there are fancy ones too. Also, apparently over 300,000 of these little ears are being sold each year at Disneyland Hong Kong. I kind of think it's way more. Oh, it feels good to sit. We've been having such an amazing day, and apparently Hong Kong Disneyland is the 14th most visited park in the entire world. And if you're wanting to know how affordable it is, what the food costs, what the water costs. A water costs us 30 Hong Kong dollars, a Coke is 35, and this hot dog is 55 Hong Kong dollars. This is the most expensive hot dog we will ever have. And we're sharing one. We spent all our money on ears. So we're sharing a hot dog. Let's see what this actually looks like. Oh, okay, it's not too badly sized. Quite a big dog, not too bad. So we're gonna share this and then back to the rides. We've just been walking around Toy Story Land where they've got giant sized sculptures of all the toys. <laughs> Woody's there. Howdy, I'm Sheriff Woody. Rex is there. I'm a dinosaur. What kind of a toy are you? Slinky's there. And it just brings back so many memories of being a child, watching those movies, and everything just comes to life around you. Lots of rides. And now we've just come to Mystic Manor. There might be a little museum of some artifacts on the inside, kind of like a ride attraction, so we're gonna go inside. It's amazing how realistic this house is. Even though this is Mystic Manor, I would totally live in this house. which is a jungle cruise so because like yes, there is a down. river in the middle of the Yeah, we've really tried our best to do anything and everything that we could here at Disneyland. And it kind of seems like people have the same idea. They look absolutely exhausted, especially the people with children. Now the lights are coming out, so we're going to wait until the show at 8 p.m. Overall, it's been an absolutely unbelievable experience. It really is a Disneyland, a magic land. It is where dreams come true. It's the happiest place on earth. I agree. I agree. <laughs>
and we start our journey of Macau here at the Hong Kong port. We're about to take this ferry for an hour from Hong Kong Island to Macau. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, 25 a.m. Thank you. Okay, other side, the window seat. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Okay, bags going here. Okay, we just got settled into our ferry. The seats look very, very comfortable. The turbojet only takes about an hour, possibly less than an hour, as opposed to the bus ride, which takes around four hours. I think we made a pretty good choice here and we've got a window, so hopefully we can see our journey all the way to Macau. This is so exciting. I cannot believe we have already left Hong Kong and headed to our next territory, which is so interesting. And this is a giant ferry compared to some of the ferries that we've been on in the Philippines. And it's so interesting interesting because we had to go through immigration mm -hmm. and then get straight on a ferry and we're going to go through immigration when we arrive in Macau. It feels so strange to go to a new country for only 24 <laughs> hours. Let's get comfy and go to Macau. What surprised me a lot about Hong Kong is how blue the water is. I don't know how big this ferry is, but I've counted there's about 21 rows and then 12 across. So there's minimum 250 people on this ferry right now, just to give you an idea. We paid 175 Hong Kong dollars for this trip, which is not bad because technically we're going from one country to another within an hour, which is something we've never done before. And I would recommend taking the ferry because you get snacks on board and drinks if you want, and you get beautiful views of the islands and the mountains of Hong Kong the whole way along. You can take the bus, but I think this is a much better option. And just like that, our ferry has docked here in Macau. Very seamless and easy trip. We're in a new country! We're in a new country and it literally took one hour. That is so awesome. I'm really excited to be here. To have the Portuguese and Chinese fusion together is going to be madness. That's going to be crazy. That was the ferry that we just went on. But before the excitement begins, we have to go through immigration again to enter Macau. It's crazy that we're already seeing Portuguese signs as well as Chinese. Immigration was very, very smooth sailing. We got 30 days automatically. And first impressions of Macau, um, hotels that are gold and casinos everywhere. For the last five minutes, we've tried to look for a normal bus. And by normal bus, I mean bus that's not a shuttle bus to one of these really massive fancy hotels. And of course, Macau is known for its gambling. We'll tell you more about Macau, the gambling, the history in a little bit. But first, we need to get on this bus and head into the city center. I think we found the right bus stop, but... The fares for all the buses are $6. Even though we are pretty much in the gambling capital of Asia, you can trust Chev and Dev to take the $6 bus. That is what we're gonna do. We just looked on this sign here. There's buses like AP1, 28A, whatever, and then our bus is number three, and it comes every seven minutes. We should be in the right spot, I think. Okay, we just got on the wrong bus. Yeah. Try again just now. And you can see everything is in English, Chinese and Portuguese. Amazing to just go one hour on the ferry and now everything seems completely different. New currency, now there's new languages, Portuguese everywhere. It's like I've left Asia and now I'm in Europe. <laughs> Thank you. We pay now? Okay, we made it on the bus. We made it on the bus. Okay. Paying our trips. Okay. Thank you. We're on the bus. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not sure how many stops we need to do, but this bus driver is going like crazy. So we're trying to hold on. We haven't even found the seat yet. Okay, we made it off the bus. We're gonna check into our hotel and then let's go and explore Macau. Here's a 
quick little tour of where we're staying in Macau. I can't actually believe it, but we thought we booked a little hotel, but it turns out to be an entire apartment. We've got TV fan, lounge area. We've got this full on kitchen with a washer dryer, kettle sink, and a stove. And we have a desk area. This is our bed. We've got a whole view of the harbor. I think that might be a floating restaurant. I didn't know this. I thought we booked like a tiny cubicle hotel room. And we got this entire apartment. apartment. This place was 700 Hong Kong dollars or Macau currency, it's the same, which is about 90 US dollars. So I can't wait to go out and explore. We were just walking down the street and I think this gives you a true idea of what Macau is like. So we've got old Chinese style buildings on the left and right with these old apartments. And then you have this beautiful modern and massive hotel right at the end of the strip. As we were looking at the hotel, we stumbled upon this tiny little sign that says coffee and it looks like there's food. So let's go check it out. No way. That looks like a Prego roll. Because we're from South Africa, we love Prego rolls. And I think we have a bit of a Portuguese influence as well. And since Macau has got a Portuguese influence and a Chinese influence, this looks like they've got Chinese food and Portuguese food as well. We love Prego rolls, so I would be so curious to know what that tastes like. Hello. They've got anything in a bun. Ham, fried egg, cheese, chicken, steak, bun. Oh, oh. Uh, two. Two. Oh. Yes. Oh. Coffee with condensed milk. Oh, okay. Hot oh, or cold? Oh, uh, cold. oh uh, hot ice. or ice? Uh, ice. Ice. Okay, so we've ordered. They call it a steak bun here. Yeah. And we in South Africa call it a prego roll. But similar, you got a bun with a big beef steak or a chicken steak on the inside. And then we're going to sit outside right here and enjoy it on the street. So going back to the word fusion, I think that's our word of the day, fusion. They've got lots of Chinese meals, noodle soups, fried rice. On the other side, they've got the steak buns. You could put anything in a bun, fish. You could put a pork chop, eggs and ham. So you've really got like a total eat me west kind of restaurant. Wow. Ah, oh, sugar. Thank you. We've had a long day today and I think I need one of these. And look at the syrup jar. <laughs> How is it? This is so good. This is the best coffee I've ever had. By far. Mm. Thank you. We just received our prego roll. I keep wanting to call it a prego roll, but it's a steak bun. Freshly baked bread. We've got the chicken steak on the inside. And it kind of smells like what we would eat at home in South Africa, which is amazing. I can't wait to try it. Again, it feels like we're in Europe. We're eating some Portuguese food on the street at an outdoor cafe. We took a one hour ferry to Europe. It feels strange. <laughs> okay, I can't wait any longer. I need to try out our little chicken steak bun. And it cost us just 23 Macau Pataka, but it's the same as the Hong Kong dollar. So 23 Hong Kong dollars. Plus, they do accept Hong Kong dollars here as well. So let's dig in. Mm. Mm. Wow. The chicken is quite flat and it's quite fragrant as well. It's definitely quite amazing to have some Portuguese food here in China or Portuguese fusion. <laughs> okay, update. After being here in Macau, we're actually learning so much more about our own South African culture as well as the culture here in Macau because Prego rolls have been part of our life ever since we can remember. We've had them in sports days, we've had them at home, our parents make us little lunches like this. But Mozambique, which is next door to South Africa, was colonized by the Portuguese and it obviously brought its way over to South Africa by Portuguese immigrants. If you Google where a Prego roll is from, it says you can find Prego rolls on the streets of Lisbon and outside any nightclub or bar in Johannesburg, which is where we're from. Oh no, M Tea. Okay, they were too good. Let, let's get one more. Just one just more. One more. We'll can, we, can we have one more? Yes, can we have one? 23 Hong Kong dollars, let's say. It's not too bad. Three dollars. Three, four dollars. Not bad. Not bad. Let's get another one. Get another one. It's <laughs> just one more. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Please arrive at 
This is absolutely fascinating. We've got complete colonial style Portuguese buildings and we've got cobblestones that we're walking on, but we're in China. We've just come to Sonado Square and this is unreal! <laughs> I'm getting a lot of smiles from the older people, like all the grands and grandpas. <laughs> I think they like me. So this is Sonado Square, which Sonado, obviously Portuguese, is this beautiful elongated triangular shaped and paved square, which is also a World Heritage Site. You can see loads of people taking photos behind me. It's absolutely beautiful because of the way it's paved and obviously the colorful colonial style architecture. Look at what? this place. Where Girl? are we right now? This place is absolutely unbelievable. The paved pathways, the waterfall, the colonial style buildings in different colors, and it just feels like I've transported myself back to Portugal. Absolutely spectacular. To give you a brief history on Macau, Macau was colonized by the Portuguese since 1557 until it transferred its sovereignty to China in 1999. Macau actually has different laws to China and since they're an autonomous territory, they work on a one country, two systems rule. That means Macau was colonized by the Portuguese for 442 years. Also, Macau is known as the Monte Carlo of the Orient because it's highly dependent on casinos and gambling. To give you an idea of how big gambling is in Macau, over 50% of the country's GDP comes from gambling taxes alone. We're only here for 24 hours though, so I don't know how much gambling we're gonna be doing. I haven't heard anyone speaking Portuguese yet, but all the signs are in Portuguese and in Chinese. Behind me, there are some street stalls selling some fresh fruit, some souvenirs, but then I'm surrounded by these colorful colonial style buildings. So you can kind of see like the Chinese markets and the European style buildings all in one place. It kind of feels weird that we're only here for 24 hours, so we're trying to just appreciate everything as quick as possible, which sounds weird. And as we're walking by, we're seeing shops like Watson's, Pandora, Sketches, in buildings that look about 100 years old. It's cool to see olden style versus modern shops. The ruins of St. Paul. That's where we should go next. Wow. Our first Portuguese treat. Our first treat in Macau. I keep thinking I'm in Europe. <laughs> it's pretty much like a crispy hardened crepe, which is like Portuguese blend. But this treat has seaweed inside. Chinese blend, the perfect cookie from Macau. We're just walking through these tiny little alleyways as if we were in the small streets of Europe. And this is what everybody's doing. They're walking down here shopping and the most important they're eating. They are snacks, treats, Chinese and Portuguese. So there's like the egg tart. This is something I haven't really seen much of in Asia, but on this little strip, everybody is standing outside and they're giving everyone tasters. You could honestly get full with the testers alone. Thank you. Look at this. I don't know. It's green and flaky and crusty. Mmm, like a waffle. Is it matcha? <laughs> like an ice cream cone. That's what it tastes like. It doesn't taste like matcha. <laughs> like you've got all the Chinese neon signs, but the cobblestones, the walls look so colonial style, European style. It's like a beef jerky and it's bold. Ooh. So delicious. Whoa, it looks uh, glazed. Does it taste like bultong? No. <laughs> no. In South Africa, we have dried meat, which we call bultong, but it's a little different to this. This is much sweeter and thinly sliced, where we normally have like thicker pieces. But they're going absolutely crazy for the beef jerky. Is that what we call it? So behind me are the ruins of St. 
call, which was actually a 17... There's a fly in there. <laughs> which is... A church in the 17th century and is now a very famous landmark here in Macau. It is a World Heritage Site. And you can see there are hundreds of stairs leading all the way up to it. This is all that's left of this church. It's this beautiful colonial style yellow building. At the top is a Uniglo. Over there is a museum. All the way down here, you've got all these branded shops. And then on this side, you've got the more olden style buildings. You can see a lot of these in Hong Kong and of course here in Macau as well. But it's actually crazy to see <laughs> Devon over there. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> and then St. Paul's ruins over here. What is going on with this guy? This guy's having the best time. I'm having the best time. This is actually quite spectacular. I can't believe how many people there are. There is no way you're going to be able to take a photo without getting so many people in the background. Let's go to the top. I want to see. Okay. I want to see Paul. Let's go. And now that we've come all the way up the stairs, you can really appreciate the architecture and just how well kept this is for how old it is. It's 25 meters high and 23 meters across. And from the top of the stairs, you can see all the way down into the town. We've now come to the south of Macau, known as Koh Tai, and the Koh Tai Strip, named from the Las Vegas Strip, also known as the City of Dreams. This is where most of the casinos and resorts are, and we're just gonna explore and see what it's like. And then behind me is the Venetian, which is the second largest casino in the entire world, and the largest hotel structure on the planet. So apparently there are 6,000 slot machines on the inside, and it's free entrance. You can go and see City of Dreams. Are you gonna try your luck? We're, we're not gamblers at all. I don't think we've ever gambled, but when in Macau, let's try our luck. Maybe we're lucky. Behind me are these giant replicas of the Big Ben and of course the Eiffel Tower. Big Ben is in front of the Londoner Hotel and these are some of the most impressive hotels I've ever seen even from far away. I say this is the Vegas Strip and I've never been to Vegas but this is a pretty good idea of what Vegas will look like. There's no need to go on a six month trip through Europe. You can just see Big Ben and the Eiffel Tower all in one go. <laughs> just come to Macau. We're standing at this traffic light waiting to cross the street and I'm obviously observing observing this incredible Big Ben replica. But I've seen this Apple store, which is almost just as impressive as this Big Ben. There he goes at full speed towards the Apple Tower, the Eiffel Tower, the Apple Tower, <laughs> towards the Apple store. Oh my goodness. We have just walked into the base of the Londoner Hotel. I think this is the reception. The lobby? I don't even know what this is. This is really impressive. We should have stayed here. Next time, next time we'll stay here. <laughs> I'm absolutely blown away. I didn't know what to expect when you came here, but this is special. So we had a brief walk through the Londoner Hotel, which was absolutely mind-blowing. We had a small walk into the gambling area, which was Unreal, we obviously couldn't record in there, but we did try our luck on the 10 cents machine and won a whole $40, which we cashed in, but we saved a little one of these as a little memento and it says 50 cents. <laughs> we won 50 cents on our second round. So that was a really fun experience. We have done everything from eat food, to try little snacks, to see the ruins, to see the culture, and to see this massive strip of craziness. It's been unreal. We'll see you in a new country for a brand new adventure. Stay tuned because you don't want to miss it.